Hey, welcome everyone. This video teach you how to stream a PS4 to an Android device. Now, this method will work on a PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 4 Pro. So for the rest of this video, when I say PS4, I'm referencing both the regular PS4 and a PS4 Pro just for simplicity because the method is exactly the same regardless of which console version you have. So to get started, it's pretty simple. You need a Sony PlayStation Network account, which is free to set up. Uh, you'll have to sign into that PlayStation 4 account as well as the Android device we're going to be logging into, which I'll show you later on how to do that. Uh, as long as the account's logged into both the devices, it should be pretty good to go. The other thing is you need, of course, is a controller, which I recommend uh, for best performance. Although you do not actually have to use a controller, um, you can actually use on-screen touch controls, which is not the best experience, but really it's up to you how you want to do it. So the first thing is let's set up the PS4 itself. Okay, so from the main screen, what you're going to do is navigate to settings, then remote play connection settings and then turn on enable remote play. Then go back to the main settings menu once again, go to account management, activate as your primary PS4, and then select activate. Now this feature might not be applicable to everyone. It's only for people that have more than one console. I myself only have one. So if you don't need this step, don't worry about it too much. And the last thing you wanna do is go back to the main system settings menu, then go to power save settings, set features available in rest mode, and then select the checkboxes for stay connected to the internet and enable turning on PS4 from network. This basically means that while your PS4 is in rest mode and you open the app for remote connectivity, that the second you turn on the app, it'll try to wake up the PS4 so you can start playing it without having to go over to your PS4 button and pressing the power button first. So I'm gonna be switching over to the Android device to get this set up now. And I just wanna mention that I'm gonna be using Samsung devices on my Galaxy Tab 5 SE, uh, it will not work. For some reason, the controller will not pair. I'm gonna actually purposely show that to you anyway, just in case you run into the same issue. But if I try pairing it with my cell phone, it works just fine. I'm not sure why, it's, if it's a Sony issue or a Samsung issue, but just bear that in mind that you might experience the same issue, but you can use the on-screen touch controls to control your uh, PS4 console. The other thing is that when I show you the system settings menu to activate Bluetooth connectivity to the controller, my system settings menu is designed by Samsung and Google, Android. Yours might be different if you're using, say, like a Motorola device, so just keep that in mind. While the controller is off, you want to press and hold the PlayStation button and the share button together at the same time for about three seconds. You'll know it's in pairing mode when the light on the top starts to flash. So over on my tablet, what I'm going to do is open up the main system settings menu, go over to connections, ensure that Bluetooth connectivity is on, then open up Bluetooth menu, and then look for wireless controller. That's what the DualShock 4 controller is called and it should pair really quick. At this point, I'm gonna open up the PS4 remote app. Now, there's several ways you can get this. One is just go to the Google Play Store and search for PS Remote Play. You can download the app like that. Uh, another one is to go to my website, which will have a QR code available. You can just scan your Android device camera on the QR code and it'll take you straight to the source. My website is usually automatically set to default and dark theme, but there's a little floating button at the bottom right. We can switch it to light theme if you want to. The third option is to simply go to the Sony PlayStation website um, from there, you can actually find instructions on how to download the app for your Android device. I'll put a link to that URL in the video description. And during the setup, you're going to log in with your Sony PlayStation credentials, the same one that's logged into your PS4 console. Now, if you run into an error like I do, where it won't automatically detect your PS4 and connect, what you have to do is go over to your PS4, open up the main system settings menu, open up the remote device connection settings, and there's going to be an option called add a device, which will give you like a six or eight digit code to pair manually with your Android device. If you have to do that, like I did, um, it works just fine. It kind of brute forces a connection. It's almost guaranteed to work at that point. Going back, so, you know, switching and fast forwarding a little bit on my Galaxy Tab S5e tablet, um, you'll notice that it does sync up and work, but it'll give me a prompt error that for some reason the controller will not be compatible, even though it works just fine with my tablet. It just doesn't work on this app. Now, if I switch over to my Samsung smartphone, same manufacturer, um, it works just fine. Uh, in fact, the performance is incredibly smooth. Now, bear in mind that for best performance, I recommend you have your PS4 on a wired Ethernet connection and that your mobile device is on the same uh, Wi-Fi network as your uh, home network, as your PS4 for best connectivity. Although, technically, uh, if you want to play this outside of your home, so if you want to go on a train or whatever, and your PS4 is back at home, you can use this service over the Internet. A couple things to keep in mind is that your upload speed that you're using the PS4 on at home, for example, has to be pretty good. Usually upload speeds are pretty slow by most ISP provider plans. The other thing is that the further away you are from home, the worse the connection might be in terms of latency. 
uh, there'll be more latency the further away you are. So best performances generally stay at home on the same network as a PS4. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that uh, streaming will not stream at full quality. So for example, if you have a PS4 Pro um, and you're trying to stream it back in 4K, chances are it's not gonna work. This is just a limitation of Sony's uh, application design. But I also noticed that it can't even stream in 1080p, even though Sony advertises that's possible. I have not gotten 1080p streaming to work on a PC or Mac, because I have made videos on how to stream to PC and Mac. You can find those videos in my video uh, channel. Uh, this doesn't work. So it's something to do with the app limitation. Sony hasn't really optimized it that well, but that's pretty much it. So if you found this video useful, be sure to check out my social links in the description. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe, and thanks for watching.